This one is video number one of five, and on this one really is kind of the welcome. Um, she did a great intro and so honored and um, humbled by that. And as she said, we've, we've really been through through a lot. In fact, I've told a lot of people, you know, 2016 was really a year, uh, every year we kind of get this reset. You know, we, we get with December 31st to January the 1st, we kind of get this, um, you know, in our culture, just kind of this emotional, um, physical, just in, the, the year kind of winds down. And then we, we really kind of start up again. And with the way that the rhythm of the season works, um, you know, a lot of people make a lot of resolutions and a lot of things that are going to change. And a lot of us, um, and, and maybe that's been you before, when you go into the new year, you really think, um, gosh, man, that was a great year. Uh, and then sometimes you really think, man, that was, that was a lot of great and a lot of not so great. And then maybe, you know, it was like us, you think, gosh, that was a little bit of good. And, and most of last year was just a, it was a ringer, um, just to be honest. It's it's something we, um, I, d I definitely don't want to repeat that year. I don't know if maybe you've had one of those before where it's just, you, you go, golly, you take all the junk that you could possibly fit into uh, your story and it seems like all of that just distills into one place. And, and I, I know that's not true. It just kind of feels like that sometimes. Um, but here's what had happened. Um, and you're probably going to hear a few of the trains in the background right there. Um, here's what happened. In 2016, it seemed like we just had thing after thing. And then you get up and you breathe after thing. And then you get up and you breathe and then another thing. And you just keep getting knocked over, knocked over, knocked over. And really what happened is for the first first time um, in, in my life, really for an extended period of time, I, I, I took some time and actually started breathing and looking around and thinking about, golly, what's, what's going on here? You know, and, and instead of just throwing myself into another task or throwing myself into another project, throwing myself into another thing to do, really step back and actually try to assess, um, man, what, what am I feeling? And I, I remember... Christy was at counseling one one Thursday afternoon. I went with her. Um, it was her idea that we go, and then I, I got invited in, and then now I, I meet with a counselor on my own. So that'll kind of tell you, you know, kind of the scope of some of the things we've been through. And uh, I remember our counselor uh, at that point. She had, she was is a woman. She had a sheet of paper and had all these. This this isn't the sheet of the paper. This is just my notes right here. But it had um, all these feelings on it, you know. And how are you feeling? And what's going on today? And I remember looking at that. Like I, I was so out of touch with what's going on with my feelings. I, I didn't even know. And I, I think that it's easy for us to not get in touch with that and just to throw that stuff under the carpet and just keep throwing it under the carpet and keep pushing on and walking on and throwing more under the carpet and get hurt and throw more under the carpet and then get hurt and throw more under the carpet. Um, it's easier in the short run to do that than to really get in touch with, with what's going on in, inside your heart, what's going on inside your soul, what's going on inside uh, inside your mind, what's going on with, 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 with your emotions. And uh, so for the first time, I really, for an extended period of time, stopped and, and took a look at, at some of that. I'm going to clear off a notification there. Took a look at that. Here's what it reminded me of. Back when I was in high school, when I was wrestling, uh, every now and then it would seem like somebody would get injured on the wrestling map. Now, I remember this happening, it happened a lot at tournaments because in a tournament there would be 10, 15, 20 teams there and there would be six mats out and multiple matches going on at a, at a time, you know, and wrestling's just one-on-one. -on -one. And I remember everybody in the stands would be there, cheerleaders would be there, all of the coaches, all of the, the team members would be up by the mats. And every now and then somebody would get injured and, and when they got injured, it was never like life-threatening that they got hurt, but every now and then somebody would get slammed really hard or they might just in, in haste, you know, two guys kind of going head to head, one slips and they run out of bounds or hit a table or a wall or something like that. Um, generally a very safe sport with lots of great rules and lots of athleticism, but somebody would get hurt and usually it was, it was just a matter of the wind getting knocked out of them. But when that happened, I remember everything in the gym stopped, like everything. And Every other match, you know, whenever it got to a, a breaking point, like it just stopped. 
um, the cheerleaders um, stopped, the coaches that were yelling stopped, the people that were on the side, like the team members, even of the opposing teams stopped, even the team members of other teams that didn't know either guy on the mat stopped. Everybody just, like there was this reverence, there was this sacred moment of, hey, somebody's not okay. Somebody, somebody just got the wind knocked out of them. And I remember we, we took a moment and we paused and we let them take as long as it took. Like, and, and this wasn't even a rule. Like, this is just, this is just how things, how things are. And at some point when, when that guy got up, um, if he can continue, he, he continued most often they could. If they couldn't, you, you know, there was still this honor and everybody, everybody clapped, everybody cheered. There, there was this, th th I don't know a way to say it other than there's just this there's just this honor there's just this this reverence for the person that was physically injured and this humility and grace that was extended that they they might not be able to go on and even if they can like it's worth the stop before we continue because everything that we're doing is so intense that we just pause and as we went through that hard year last year, and, and even some of the stuff now that I'm kind of wrestling and processing through from, from all of that, I, I remember thinking like, you know, if, if when emotional things happen, if we, when we got emotionally injured, if um, when we had a, a, a rough week, when we had a rough year, when we had um, a divorce or strain or um, abuse or some of the things that I'll, I'll just, I'll just tell you some stuff from our own story. If, if when these things happened, if, if it actually, if somebody stabbed you in the back and it literally created in your back a physical wound where, where you were bleeding, we, we, would, we would stop and we'd deal with it. If, if like, you know, when you become married, you're one flesh. And if, if, if when a divorce happened, if, if literally like part of your body just ripped off for just for a season, like we would, we, we, we would, as weird as that sounds like, we would stop and we would, we would tend to it. You know, we would, we would, we would wrestle with it. Um, but so often because emotional things don't leave an easy, obvious scar, we just tend to move on and we, we don't stop and we don't reverence our, ourselves and we don't often e even think about um, uh, stopping for the people that we don't know, the, the people that are, that are hurting all around us, even, even particularly the people that we know. So here's here's some of the stuff that piled on from us last year. I'm just going to be transparent. I'm, I'm going to give you just a, a small snippet of it. Um, I, I I remember a couple of years ago we we adopted a couple of high needs high needs boys. We we thought one of them was high needs. We thought the other one wasn't. Turns out they both had really really deep a lot, a lot of a lot of hurts, a lot of wounds, a lot of injury that they were carrying emotionally uh, from some things that happened when they were very young boys. Still two boys that are part of our family. And the trauma created by one of them literally flipped the house upside down emotionally relationally um, it took 90% of all of our parenting energy and we focused all of attention really on, on one of that kid and neglected a lot of the things that were going on with the other kids um, because of that I, I became very anxious I became very bitter towards that kid um, I, I wore that emotion on my sleeve a lot and um, you know that 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 anger was inside and it just kind of was looking for some way to come out and a lot of times it would just at the most odd moment just you know it, it's out uh, maybe, maybe you've had something like that I remember during the same season this sounds really odd but I quit working outside the home at a job that I've been working at for for a long long season for seven eight years and, and I'd always worked full-time outside the home and all of a sudden like that identity is stripped away and, I, and I'm like what what in the world do I do now like who who am I like we identify ourselves based on like when we're meeting somebody at the coffee shop or we run into them at the mall or we um, run into somebody from high school we, we introduce ourselves based on um, not not who are you like as a person but what what do you do like what I mean what do you do outside the home what do you do for a living what what earns your paycheck and that season really, uh, as, as odd as that sounds, like it'd be everybody's dream to not work outside the home, right? But just to work inside the home, like it really, it really flipped me into a tailspin. Um, I, I remember it. I'm just going to give you the list because I, I started going through it. I, I remember this summer 
Christy and I had already had ups and downs with all of this. And, you know, we, we've had these seasons in marriage. She told you a little bit about where, where they're, and we'd be transparent. Like, if you want to talk about this, we'd talk about it with you. Where you have those seasons in marriage where you think it can't get any better than this. Like, this is exactly what I signed up for. And we've also had those seasons and experienced those seasons where you're like, what? what? Like, this is the for, for worst part that we, I remember saying the vows, but like, I, I never thought we would get to, the, like, we, we just put that in the vows because that's there, but now now we're actually walking the for worse part. And like, we, we don't even know if we've, I mean, we, we love each other, but we're not sure if we actually want to even be married, right? And, and I remember that all happening during the same season. Um, I, I remember like in the last couple of years that I started writing down, just cataloging some of this. Um, and, it, and as we had de dealt with, one of the adopted boys doing some things inappropriate to some of the other children and having to, to navigate through that. I remember as looking back and looking back, we used to have several rental houses and, and guys like, I, I got two of them foreclosed on. Like that's, it's just what happened. Yeah. I remember last year, one of our kids, he had a broken bone and you look back at that and you think, golly, all the stress of stuff outside of me, but inside the family, and while we're dealing with that and enduring that, kind of walking through and trying to manage every other thing that's going on so much so that it all culminated, like, and I'm giving you just little tidbits of all of it, just just so you know, like, I, I'm, like, I've been there, and I'm, I'm there. I remember this January, I actually had a car accident, what, it wasn't my fault, meaning sometimes you can be hurt by things that... Um, you can be hurt by things that you do that are they're your fault, right? Like there, there are definitely times where I've messed up and got egg on my face and it was my fault. I threw the egg there. There are also times when you get hurt and it has nothing to do with what you did. Like it has stuff to do with what other other people did to you, right? And um, so this one, somebody hits me, I'm, I'm in a car and they, they hit me from the behind and, and usually like I'm on top of my game and I'm on top of this stuff and know exactly what to do. And, and I remember in this point, like, I got out of the car, I wasn't injured, I was parked when they hit me, I was in the middle of a turn lane, and, and they sideswiped me, and it was, it was clear it was their fault, and, and I didn't even get out to get their insurance information. I, I got out, and I didn't even check on them. Like, I, I didn't get their name, I didn't get their telephone number, I I, I was cordial to, to the officer when he came, but I, like, I didn't get any information at all, like, I just, I just kind of um, took a couple photos and sat in my car. And, and I even called our insurance guy. And I was like, I mean, I, I don't even know what happened. Like, I, I and, and thankfully we've got a great agent who took the lead and handled a lot of things, handled a lot of things for me. The, the the point is this: like, I've been there, and I guess that some of you are probably there too. And there's this great story in the Bible where Job's a guy that goes through this, and he has these friends that come and sit with him. And here's kind of what I want to do for the next four videos: is I kind of round this one out. Is Job 2.13, it, it says that they sat with him on the ground for seven days and seven nights. You can read the story later. And no one spoke a word to him, for they saw that his suffering was great. Now, if you read in Job 3.1, it says, like, Job's saying, like, man, I, w I wish I could just erase the day that I was born. Like, I wish I could just reboot the hard drive of this world and not even be here. And it was all cool. And if you've read the story, like, you know that the friends start going off, well, this is your fault. You did this. And, th and then in the end, God kind of, you know, says, no, 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 no. In other words, er everything went okay while they just stopped and just sat and just let him catch his breath and, and just let him breathe. And, and so my idea for maybe the next... Um, next couple videos go about six to eight minutes each is is that you just stop and breathe and that all of you here stop and breathe and I, I've titled this one welcome and wounded healers this is stress away that I've got like blowing in the back stress away is like one of my absolute favorites this one you like you just smell it and it's um this one's kind of been in my pocket for the last year or so um literally and drank it and diffused it and go to sleep with it and use it in the car and Here's my, my prayer for you, my thought. is like the next couple of videos. Great quote that I got from a Brene Brown book. Pima Cadron. Compassion, he says this, 
Compassion is not a relationship between the healer and the wounded. Compassion is a relationship between equals. Only when we know our own darkness, like only when we know the, the junk that we've been through, um, again, some of it our fault, some of it not our fault, you know, all kinds. Only when we know our own darkness well can we be present to the darkness of others. Compassion becomes real when we recognize our shared humanity. Yeah, so like we've all got stories where we're all strong in certain areas, right? We're all weak in other areas, and we're all weak in the areas that others are strong. We're all strong in the areas that others of us are weak, and we've all um, like we're all ahead of the curve on 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 some stories, right? And some of us are all like behind the curve on other parts of the story. Like we can all kind of walk and help each other and move forward, and right? And we can also my my prayer for the next um, next four videos.